am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration of freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of wilting injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro is still not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. And so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our Republic wrote this magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men and white men as well, would be guaranteed the unalienable right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hollow spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. There is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or taking a tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make the real promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and the desolate islands and valleys of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. It will be fatal for the nation to overlook this urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. And those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off some steam and will now be content, will have a rude awakening if this nation returns to business as usual. And there will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until our bright day of justice emerges. But there is something I must say to my people who stand in the warm thresholds which leads into the palace of justice. In this process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not speak to satisfy our thirst of freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hate. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. This marvelous new metallicy has engulf the Negro community and must not lead us to distrust our white people. For many of our white brothers are evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny and that they have come to realize that their freedom is restrictively bound by our freedom. We cannot walk alone 
And as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who ask the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We will never be satisfied as long as the Negro is a victim of unspeakable horrors and police brutality. We will never be satisfied as long as our bodies are heavy with fatigue of travel and cannot gain lodging in motels and the highways and hotels of the cities. I am not unmindful of some of you that, that have come here out of the great trials and tribulations. Some of you that have come fresh from the narrow jail cells, and some of you that have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos of the northern cities, knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valleys of despair, I say to you today, my friend. And so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of the creed. And we will hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state swathering with the heart of injustice, swathering with the heart of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racist, with its governors hanging his lips, dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and with little white girls as brothers. 